Welcome to this brief presentation on the Health Sciences Reasoning Test. This presentation is brought to you by the Office of Academic and Student Affairs of the School of Pharmacy and Health Professions at Creighton University. It is based on the 2013 update test manual. More details about the HSRT are available at the publisher's website at insightassessment.com. The purposes of this presentation are fourfold. First, after this presentation, you should understand why the HSRT is being implemented as part of your program's curriculum assessment plan. Second, you will become familiar with the main components of the tests. And third, you will have an introductory understanding of what the various scores of the test indicate. Finally, we hope you will become aware of some of the resources available to you in the school to help improve your critical thinking. Each program in our school has set specific outcome objectives related to critical thinking. Outcome statements essentially are what guide how a curriculum progresses or how its elements are strung together. They are statements of what a student will be expected to demonstrate upon completion of the program. For example, educational outcome number three of the pharmacy curriculum states that upon graduation the student will be able to apply critical thinking skills to support evidence-based pharmacy practice. That is broken down to even more smaller elements, such as that upon graduation the student would be able to describe sound scientific methods and research design, types and examples of data, and methods of data collection, or utilize prior knowledge, available information, and new data to identify, prevent, and resolve problems and make appropriate decisions. The occupational therapy and physical therapy programs have similar outcome statements. Please refer to your program's objectives located in the program website uh, at the school website. At all ages of life, critical thinking skills and habits of mind are needed by each of us when solving problems and making decisions that affect ourselves, our families, our country, and our world. Learning demands strength in critical thinking because learning requires the interpretation and integration of new knowledge and its practical and appropriate application when encountering novel situations, problem conditions, and innovative opportunities. Human reasoning and problem solving are highly complex processes, but not impossible to analyze, measure, and improve. A measure of critical thinking that describes an individual's comparative strength in critical thinking is a valuable aid in, de in determining a person's capacity to benefit from training or to succeed in their job. Weak critical thinking skills show themselves in many ways. Dangerous and costly errors, repeated mistakes, bad decisions, failed systems, inaction when action is needed, the giving of bad advice, inaccurate assumptions, the poor design of training programs, the poor evaluation of educational curricula, the lack of anticipated action, the list is long. Students who enter with weak critical thinking skills are not prepared to benefit from the educational program that we offer them. Their presence in the classroom or laboratory causes instructors to slow or alter the training of other students. Their presence in clinics, internships, or field exercises risks increased injuries and liabilities related to likely errors of both inaction and wrong action. Unaddressed weaknesses in critical thinking skills result in loss of opportunities, of financial resources, of relationships, and even loss of life. There's probably no other attribute more worthy of measure than the critical thinking skills of a person. The list of what might go wrong due to weak reasoning skills in high-stake practice settings, such as those where health services are provided, is almost unending. These settings require practitioners to make critically important judgments nearly constantly. We have already mentioned how poor thinking can lead to dangerous and costly errors. Poor thinking leads to repeated mistakes because the person fails to learn. Poor thinking leads one to make bad decisions because the person doesn't always realize he or she is missing information or is basing a decision on inaccurate information. Thus, service programs or systems may fail, or a person may not take action when it is warranted. Poor thinkers give bad advice because they make an inaccurate assumption. Poor thinking is not only the realm of students. Poor thinking on the part of faculty and 
can lead to poor design of educational programs, poor evaluation of curricula, or the lack of action to make changes when they are needed. Today, educational programs are being required to demonstrate that they are effectively improving critical thinking skills. Individual measures of critical thinking ability, analysis, inference, evaluation, inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning, for example, provide valuable information about potential hires, students, and give guidance to where to dedicate programs on improvement for workers and students. The Health Sciences Reasoning Test, or HSRT, is a tool that can help educational programs measure high-stakes reasoning and decision-making processes. The HSRT is, the, is an instrument specifically calibrated for students in health science educational programs, both undergraduate and graduate, and for professional health science practitioners. The instrument development team included experts in critical thinking, assessment, psychometrics and measurement, statistics, and decision science. Continuing research on the HSRT focuses on the valid and reliable measurement of testing critical thinking skills at all levels of educational and occupational expertise. First-year students who have taken the HSRT already received their individual score report via email. That message was copied to each student's academic advisor, where it can be used for individual advisement. Students' Programs Assessment Committees received aggregate summaries of HSRT scores, which they will use to measure changes over time. Only aggregate data is used for assessment. The student's individual score is only available to the academic advisor and to the academic success counselors in the Office of Academic and Student Affairs if a student wishes to review results individually. The HSRT provides three types of scores. An overall measure of critical thinking skills called the overall score, scaled scores that describe strengths and weaknesses in various skill areas. These areas are easily addressed if someone wishes to improve in them. The HSRT also provides a percentile rank that compares the taker with other takers. HSRT scores are calculated through a combination of overall time, number of items answered, and so on. The resulting scores describe the taker's overall strength in using reasoning to form reflective judgments about what to believe or what to do. To score well overall, the test taker must excel in the sustained, focused, and integrated application of core reasoning skills, including analysis, interpretation, inference, evaluation, explanation, induction, and deduction. The overall score predicts the capacity for success in educational or workplace settings which demand reasoned decision-making and thoughtful problem-solving. The two types of scores that are most helpful to students to review are the overall score and the scaled scores. The overall score is reported according to four broad numerical cut scores. Superior, which indicates critical thinking skills that are superior to the vast majority of test takers. Strong, which indicates consistent with the potential for academic success and career development. Moderate, which indicates a potential for skill-related challenges when engaged in problem-solving and reflective decision-making. And lastly, not manifested. This means that there was a possible and sufficient test taker effort, cognitive fatigue, or possible reading or language comprehension issues. If you had an overall score of 14 or below, please contact an academic success counselor. A score of 10 or lower is extremely weak and not consistent with a minimal college entry level performance. Scores of 6 or lower may not be true scores. Untrue scores may indicate that English is a second language, that the student was not feeling well when taking the test, that the student was seriously distracted or disturbed by the testing environment, or had poor motivation and showed poor effort during the testing. The purpose of the HSRT scale scores is to identify areas of strength in the individual and areas of relative weakness that should be addressed in subsequent training. 
These include analysis, inference, evaluation, induction, and deduction. Analytical reasoning skills enable people to identify assumptions, reasons, and claims, and to examine how they interact in the formation of arguments. We use analysis to gather information from charts, graphs, diagrams, spoken language, and documents. People with strong analytical skills attend to patterns and to details. They identify the elements of a situation and determine how those elements interact. St strong interpretation skills can support high quality analysis by providing insight into the significance of what a person is saying or what something means. Inference skills enable us to draw conclusions from reasons and evidence. We use inference when we offer thoughtful suggestions and hypotheses. Inference skills indicate the necessary or the very probable consequences of a given set of facts and conditions. Conclusions, hypotheses, recommendations, or decisions that are based on faulty analysis, misinformation, bad data, or bias evaluations can turn out to be mistaken even if they have been reached using excellent inference skills. Evaluative reasoning skills enable us to assess the credibility of sources of information and the claims they make. We use these skills to determine the strengths and weaknesses of arguments. Applying evaluation skills, we can judge the quality of analyses, interpretations, explanations, inferences, options, opinions, beliefs, ideas, proposals, and decisions. Strong explanation skills can support high-quality evaluation by providing the evidence, reasons, methods, criteria, or assumptions behind the claims being made and the conclusions being reached. Decision-making in context of uncertainty relies on inductive reasoning. We use inductive reasoning skills when we draw inferences about what we think must probably be true based on analogies, case studies, prior experiences, statistical analyses, simulations, hypotheticals, and familiar circumstances and patterns of behavior. As long as there is the possibility, however remote, that a highly probable conclusion might be mistaken, the reasoning is inductive. Although it does not yield certainty, inductive reasoning can provide a solid basis for confidence in our conclusions. Decision-making in precisely defined contexts where rules, operating conditions, core beliefs, values, policies, principles, procedures, and terminology completely determine the outcome depends on strong deductive reasoning skills. Deductive reasoning moves with exacting precision from the assumed truth of a set of beliefs to a conclusion that cannot be false if those beliefs are true. Deductive validity is rigorously logical and clear-cut. Deductive validity leaves no room for uncertainty unless one alters the meaning of words or the grammar of the language. This table displays cut scores for interpreting the strength of the SHRT scale scores. HSRT scores in the blue column are strong, and scores in the red column indicate that the skill being measured was not manifested. In other words, based on the answers provided by the test taker, ability to perform the skill was not detected. If you have a score in the red column, we encourage you to contact an academic success counselor to work on that skill. Percentile scores show relative strength of the test taker when compared to others like them at a national level. These scores are most useful if the SHRT is being used as an admission test, which we do not do at Creighton University. However, they do give you an insight into how your abilities to reason critically compare with other students entering educational programs in the health sciences. For example, if a student has an overall score of in the 68th percentile, that means that this person has scored higher on this test than 68 of every 100 like persons who test nationally in the United States. Now that you have a brief understanding of the HSRT, what should you do? 
First of all, keep in mind that this score is only one measure of critical thinking. Don't rely solely on these results. That can be a self-fulfilling prophecy. There are many resources available to you in our school to help you strengthen your reasoning skills. For example, our SOAR program, Top of the Academic Success Counselors, as a course each semester can help you strengthen all your abilities as a student, including your critical thinking. You can contact an academic advisor or an academic success counselor for additional support. An academic success counselor will go through a process with you to help strengthen your skills. This typically will involve an evaluation of your attitude and expectations towards learning, a review of how you incorporate new information, a process to identify strategies to apply and extend your knowledge, and finally way they will pinpoint ways through which to establish or reinforce critical thinking habits. It is easy to contact an academic success counselor. You can either contact them via email, call them on the phone, or you can contact the Office of Academic and Student Affairs to set up an appointment. Please visit the Office of Academic and Student Affairs website at spahp2.creighton.edu slash OSA to identify additional resources available to you. Please don't hesitate to contact anyone in OSA if you have questions about this test or about any of the services available to you.